it slept, and in sleeping, it dreamed. These dreams were not true dreams, however, but rather flashes of memory. Moments in time crystallized and left suspended in the blackness of its consciousness. As it slept, it analyzed every facet of these fossilized moments. It saw again the offered sacrifice and felt the old hunger. Heard the chanting of the faithful, a sound it had not heard in years. It was the last in this place. It knew this, yet it did not know how. It understood little about the world or itself. It had not been created to understand, but to serve. To watch and stand sentry through the long aeons of geological waxing and waning. The one who had created it had slumbered in the deepest of deeps, lightless places where the welcoming dark stretched forever. It had been born in the dark and found comfort in it. There was too much light above. But the creator was gone now, as were the others like it. It did not know where, for it had not been allowed to follow. It had been left to patrol the long emptiness and watch the dark for intruders. It did not know why, only that it must. So it had prowled the dark, ensuring that the deeps remained sacrosanct, inviolate. Then had come the chants, the prayers, tiny sounds filtering down from great heights. It had been drawn upwards, ever upwards, through abyssal canyons and red-lit caverns through the tumbled cities of those who had once inhabited the depths and made obeisance to the creator until something had put them to flight. It did not perceive their absence, save as a vague hollow in its awareness. They had been there, and now they were not. Soon it might well have forgotten that they had ever been at all, but then it heard the chanting, the old words, calling it up out of the comforting dark into the hateful light remembered again and wondered. Curiosity had compelled it more than any respect for the old rites. It had no understanding of the rituals of the ones above. They did not bind it, for it could not be bound, save by the will of the Creator, or those of equal stature. So it thought at the time, but it remembered the ancient days when those chants had preceded sacrifice. So it climbed up and up until it reached the tumbled cities and that which was built above. Another city, larger than those below, and built by another race. It did not concern itself with the differences between such folk. Those of the lower deeps had been cold-blooded and wise. These were warm-blooded and so noisy. It recalled an earlier time, when these frail warm-bloods had descended into the lowest depths. How they had screeched at the sight of it, writhing in pain, pierced through by the horrid light they had carried into the depths with them. It had harried them up and up, as far as it dared go, chasing them back to their realm. Then it had returned to the safety of the dark, there to lick its wounds. They had hurt it, though they had not realised it, and it had hurt them in return. But now they were calling to it, as they had once done in time out of mind. Up it crawled, stretching itself higher and thinner, trembling at the dim radiance that infested these heights. But eager, oh so eager, the higher it climbed, the more eager it became. It had been so long since it had tasted a sacrifice, not since the days of the Creator. It recalled now when the Creator had departed, not long after the warm bloods had descended into the dark with their stinging lights. They had come to find the Creator, whom they worshipped, and in finding him and his servants, had grown afraid. It did not understand fear, save in the most basic fashion. It feared light, because light caused pain. But the Creator did not cause pain. So why then had they been afraid? Such questions slipped its mind almost as suddenly as they'd arrived. It had no use for the answers at any rate. When it reached the city of the upper depths, it heard again the warm blood song of fear. Light sliced the dark as shrill sounds split the silence. It avoided both, climbing higher still, and there, perilously close to the sky of stone, it found them, clad in the raiment of those who worshipped the Creator, the servants of mighty Sathogua, 
the sleeper of Nakai. The sacrifice knelt at the edge of a cliff, clad in iron, marked with the sacred sigils. The warm blood struggled and made the fear noises as it approached, but it was overcome by hunger and ignored this warning. Never before had the sacrifices shown fear. That this one did should have sent it fleeing back to the safety of the depths. But it was hungry, very hungry. Thus, it persisted. It slipped about the sacrifice and inundated it with gentle grace, as was tradition. It filled the dark places of the struggling warm blood, slipping into its flesh and tenderly devouring the soft things within. So distracted was it by its feast that it did not notice as the adherents erected a cage of light about it. When it realised its peril, it had no place to hide, save in the meat husk of the sacrifice, even as they had intended. Burrowed in, retreating as the bars of light closed about it. The adherents, the false adherents, spoke words it did not know, but understood nonetheless. Words of binding, mnemonic chains to seal it away in the shriveled husk of the traitor sacrifice. It made itself smaller and smaller, folding itself again and again, trying to escape the reverberations of those words and the light that grew ever closer. But it could not make itself small enough. In the end, it huddled in the hollow belly of the husk, compacted to the size of a seed. The husk shook as it was removed from the place of sacrifice and taken elsewhere. Someplace dark, but stifling. Someplace forgotten. It remembered all of this, reliving it over and over again in its long isolation. Trapped, it could do nothing else. Every time it thought things might turn out differently, but they never did. It kept trying and failing, trying and failing. Eventually, it went insane. The seeds sprouted, stretching, filling, trying to burst the bonds of withered meat that held it. But the chains refused to break. It could taste the marks of the betrayers carved into the husk. They stung worse than the light. Sigils of binding, older than the world itself, and too strong for a mere servitor to break. Finally, exhausted, it slept. It slumbered until something woke it. The rattling of shifting rock. Muffled voices, voices unlike those of its captors, its betrayers. Then it was free, rising into the hateful light. It squirmed down deep into the hidden places of its prison, where the light could not reach. And it waited. <laughs>